Hey folks, my name is Brad Martin and we are way up in the mountains off trail with our metal detector hiking towards a GPS point supplied to me by the landowner who invited me here. And according to them and the stories passed down through their family, this GPS point marks the location of an old home from the 1700s that once belonged to this area's doctor. So I'm pretty excited to see what we'll find today. We're almost there. All right, well, we found it. The uh, GPS point was not quite correct, but here it is. The ruins of an old home. You can see it's a large stone-lined foundation and uh, the entrance to it is right over here. It's a little bit overgrown, but not too bad. Now, something we have to keep in mind is this home was here in colonial times mid 1700s probably up until the early 1800s back then because this area was so sparsely populated there really just wasn't enough people here to have kind of strict craft specialization like you wouldn't walk down main street and see the blacksmith tailor cobbler silversmith doctor because there were so few people oftentimes people had to double up on crafts or sometimes triple up on crafts so while this home may have belonged to a doctor just taking a look around, it seems like this was probably also a farm. So we can kind of use that to anticipate what we might find here today. But I'm still excited. Let's see what we can find. All right, well, it just got here and there's already booms in the distance. Uh, but I've dug three holes so far. And the first was this big colonial button. The second one was this big colonial button. And the third is another button, uh, but this one, this one's got some gilt on it, some gold gilt, and we're gonna clean it off together. Maybe there's a design of some kind that's more than just floral, perhaps military or something else. I don't know, we'll see. Nope, I don't think so, I'm afraid. Uh, but this is a great sign for this place. Three holes, three old buttons. Uh, I'll clean this up with some CLR when I get home, see if there's any image on there, but I don't believe there is. But, like I said, uh, this is a great sign for what else we may find here today. Spirits are high. Let's see what else we can find. Uh, we've got the, the famous hoe. Uh, we find these, or fragments of these, pretty regularly out here. And the only reason I'm showing this one to you is just because of how worn down it is. You can imagine, you know, it would have been a crescent shape. And these folks used this thing as long as they could. It's kind of curling up here, it's curling up here. It's clearly hand-forged colonial. You know, a blacksmith made this in his shop. We'll clean this up and put it back on a handle and uh, we'll have a hoe in the collection. Maybe we won't put it on a handle, it's be kind of hard to display, I guess, but <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. My buddy uh, Mike found one of these with me a couple years ago now. It was also colonial, but it was um, like a grubbing hoe, and it had a touch mark for the black blacksmith on there. I can't say for sure if this one will or not, but um, something to look for when we clean it up. Pretty cool. <sighs> Alright, well I just... Uh... Uh, I'm a little bit excited here. Uh, I don't know what it is, and it was a very crummy target. It's very uh, saturated with uh, with iron and nails and stuff right here. So this, I don't know what material it is. It might be iron. It might be brass, and I have to be careful because it's starting to crumble. It does have like a green patina to it there. And I pulled it out, and I said, "Oh, it's like you know, an iron piece of junk iron." But the more I look at it, that it certainly looks like there's a shank right there. And I turned it over, and I think that's a, a bust of some kind. It almost looks like a Roman helmet. <sighs> Man, that thing is crazy looking. I was wondering if this hole here was part of the design, but I don't think it is. Maybe the back is iron. That's what's kind of falling apart. So, so cool. Starting to uh, sprinkle and rain out here a little bit, but that's okay. This thing is incredible. 
What do you think it is? Button? Big uh, coat button or something? I don't know. It's awesome though. Let's see what else we can find in here. So the rain's finally stopping. You know, we haven't found any coins today, but it's not uncommon to find at least a few colonial coins, usually coppers, at a place like this, of this age, elevation, up here in the middle of nowhere. I often get asked, you know, why were these people dropping so many coins? Seemingly, it was so long ago, these coins would have been a lot more valuable than they are today. It didn't seem like they had a whole lot up here. Like I mentioned, a lot of these people had multiple trades. Oftentimes in the springtime, People that were proficient in one trade would travel. They would go to homes like this up here in the mountains and either sell what they're selling or do work around the house like a tinker would go around and fix all of the pewter cutlery and, and plates and stuff. Uh, so there was business conducted oftentimes out in somebody's front yard. Money would be exchanged. Maybe this person spent the night, dropped some of their money out in a field or in a guest house or something like that. That's just one possibility of why sometimes we find coins where we wouldn't really necessarily expect to find so many coins in the ground. The sun's coming out now. Let's see if we can find a coin. The uh, rain just stopped, and now all the birds are starting to sing their songs again. Um, so I'm following along this stone wall here, and I got a eh, an okay target. Not bad. I haven't been finding a ton of tinned iron out here. Uh, I like sheet iron. Check it out. Incredible. I think it's broken. Oh, it is broken a little bit. So again, since we're in a colonial place, these were uh, oftentimes labeled by manufacturer on these older ones. I can't tell if that's a three. We well, do have an N right here. Maybe that'll be enough to figure out who made it and then of course figure out the date. So this is a, a jingle bell. People call them crotal bells. You know, where we are right now, we're up in the mountains of Vermont. We have harsh winters. It's also known as a sleigh bell, and that's more than likely what this was used on back then. Uh, you have to imagine in the wintertime, our wagons were not coming up and down these old dirt roads. They were using sleds or, you know, sleighs and uh, thunder again. And that's what this would have been uh, used for, just like the Christmas time sleigh bell. Very, very, very cool. I wish it wasn't broken, but awesome. It was not a very good target on the metal detector. Um, I saw that it was round and flat, and I panicked to get the camera out. So I'll let you hear it. Uh, that sounds great now. When it was in the ground, it wasn't so much. Um, it's just like in the 70s, which is like a button range. But it's definitely a coin. Bugs are pretty bad out here. So I don't know if you folks can see this, and actually I'm not even sure if I'm holding it correctly, but I'm pretty sure what we've got is some armor down here and a, a head looking right. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that that's what that is. A guy facing right, uh, which would indicate that's a George the Third. You know, this could potentially be a state coin, but I'm, I'm going to guess that it's probably a British half penny. Uh, I haven't found a copper like this. Uh, well, let's see. It's almost July and I think maybe February was the last one, I, last one I found. So it's been like six months. I am very excited, especially because it's also my first copper with the dais and uh, you know, I was kind of unsure what they sounded like and now I know. British coins actually typically ring up lower on a metal detector than our American large cents. So, you know, they do typically r ring up in the range of buttons, but now I know. Now I know what to listen for. All right, well, I haven't really been doing a whole lot of, you know, filming before I dig a target because I do have a fairly new metal detector and I'm still learning it, but 
I did get an okay target here. It's a mid-tone. You can hear that. It's a 45. Very low. Um, you know, probably a shotgun shell. But since we are in a colonial place, uh, it could be a button. It could be anything. Let's see what it is together here. what it is, an old button. It always depends on where you are. Sometimes there's a lot of shotgun shells, maybe it's not colonial, maybe it's turn of the century, and you have to pass by targets like that because nine times out of ten it's going to be garbage. But in a place like we are today, you know, nine times out of ten it's not going to be a shotgun shell, it's going to be something from the colonial time. So whether you dig targets and whether you don't dig targets, for me it always depends on where you are and uh, what you're finding that day. A lot of buttons today, but uh, I'm not complaining. All right, well I have uh, an uninteresting find. I've shown these countless times in my videos. It's an oxen shoe. It goes on the foot of a cow trained for draft work. And, you know, how many times can you show an ox, oxen shoe? Uh, but you know, one thing that we have to keep in mind is that in the colonial days, these oxen were really, you know, the tractors of the time. They did the majority of all the heavy lifting on a farm. And much like horses, they needed to have their shoes adjusted or replaced like every six weeks. So the farmer would need to take their oxen down into town or one of these other homes up here on the mountain to find a blacksmith to have the oxen's shoes worked on. Now, one little piece of information that I recently stumbled upon is that oxen, or cows, can't just pick up one foot to have their shoes replaced. They either need to be laid down and hogtied, or most blacksmiths back in that time had these elaborate contraptions made out of wood and straps to literally pick up the ox off the ground so that their shoes could be comfortably replaced. <laughs> It's just an incredible thought imagining this giant animal picked up off the ground, probably thrashing around, uh, getting their shoes sized up. And you know, it adds a little bit more meaning to these oxen shoes we find, knowing that when the farmer noticed that it was gone, they would have to take a trip down to town and put their cow up into this contraption. <laughs> kind of funny. Let's see what else we can find. Well, we just had a pretty good shower. Things all wet now, <laughs> including me. Um, but I just got a pretty nice target here, and it sounded very small. I thought it was going to be another button. You know, it's staring back at me in the hole now, and it is not small. It, it appears to be a shoe buckle. I have no idea if it's complete, if it's a fragment. What do we have? Wow, it's mostly complete. Look at that thing. Now it is, as you can see, actively uh, deteriorating here, falling apart. Another hundred years in the ground, this thing uh, been half this size. That's beautiful. Let me get my toothbrush, see if maybe there's a design around the outside. I suppose a little water wouldn't hurt. And they say and I've said in the past, don't spray, spray my brass, but uh, it's already wet and we're just gonna get more wet, so might as well get some of this dirt off gently. Appears though there's really a uh, design at all on there. This is a big colonial, maybe early 1800s uh, shoe buckle. Technically, the colonial period ends 1776 and they wore these things in through the early 1800s, but uh, I generally always call them a colonial era shoe buckle because it's hard to say exactly when this was from. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, that is uh, the find of the day so far. You know, I checked the weather and 
this isn't supposed to last, so hopefully we'll uh, <laughs> dry out by the end of the day. Beautiful. All right, well, we're kind of winding down to the end of the day here. Just kind of searching for my final, final targets I'm going to dig. Try to end the day on a high note. Um, and we have a high tone here. One of the better ones I've heard in a while. I can hear it straight out of my headphones. It's an 85, sometimes it's a 90. Might be a big piece of sheet metal, but. Oh, it's this. Huh. This is interesting. This, I believe, is lead. Is there any markings on here? I don't see any markings. It is lead. It would have been um, disc. And it was clipped. I mean, very crudely clipped. You can see it took them a couple tries to get through it. We t I've talked about lead um, ingots a lot in my videos uh, recently. But it's pretty interesting. And, you know, I had a cool... If we found this in a, in a park from the 1990s, wouldn't find it as interesting. But, you know, this is mid late 1700s, so. Really kind of sparks your imagination about what this could have been used for. Best guess is, is just kind of, like I said, utility lead cut and used as needed, but for whatever reason they dropped this chunk. Pretty interesting. All right, well, I decided this was gonna be my last hole. <laughs> Thunder's rumbling in the distance. And that piece of lead was like right over there. And I got a very similar target, it was a pretty nice tone. Didn't even bother getting the camera out because I just thought it was going to be more of it. Can you see it? Oh, incredible. You know, I, I when I saw this at first, I thought that it was going to be a shoe buckle, another shoe buckle. But now that I'm looking at it, it might still be, but it's not curved whatsoever. Brass, you can see the green poking out there. Now, I'm just trying to use my imagination here. Was this a shoe buckle uh, that got flattened? Or could this potentially be a hat buckle? You know, when we think about a stereotypical pilgrim, we've, they've got the buckles on their shoes and the buckle on their hat. This one is very pretty. Could it be a belt buckle? I'm not sure. Um, I'd like to think it was a hat buckle. That'd be pretty incredible. But uh, I think that we're just a little bit too late, you know, like the late 1700s here for folks to be wearing buckles on their hats, but you never know. I'd put my money on this being a shoe buckle that got stepped on by a cow or a horse and got flattened out. So cool and uh, very appropriate for our final find today. All right, folks, well, on that note, we're gonna call it a day. We finally found our coin, and you know, anytime you can find one or more colonial shoe buckles is a win in my book. You know, according to the stories of the landowner, a doctor lived here. Did we find anything that would prove that? Not really, we didn't find any you know, doctor's instruments or anything, but it does certainly seem though that if a doctor did live here, they had dual professions. There was also a farmer based on everything we found. Got everything out that we found here, let's take a look. All right, uh, look at this pile of stuff we've got here. We had a very, very, very good day. 16 buttons, unbelievably, none of them have any designs on them whatsoever. In the back, of course, we have the hoe, which I'm going to take home and try to clean up best I can, and uh, maybe, maybe not put a new handle on. Our crotal bell, which unfortunately formed another crack now that it's out of the ground. Hopefully uh, it stays completely intact by the time we get home. Two just enormous musket balls. Of course, the uh, thunder needs to end the day, right? <laughs> uh, we got our hunk of lead here. Um, two shoe buckles. This one is very clearly a shoe buckle. This one may or may not be um, that was just maybe flattened. We have our huge Roman, by the looks of it, uh, button, which you know, seems quite a bit later than everything else here, but this too is kind of actively falling apart. Um, and then we have the one coin today, which is a, a George III British halfpenny, which you know, its date fits in line with uh, everything else we found here. Really, really amazing day. All right, folks, I want to thank you again for joining me up here in the mountains of Vermont, and hopefully I'll see you next Friday 
for another adventure up here.